Hello there, guys. This is just a short video that I need to make to get out of me system so that I can get back to doing something actually productive. I'm going to be talking about a video on the TED Ed channel. And now they put out little animations explaining different scientific and philosophical ideas, and sometimes they all do a video explaining some mathematical or logical puzzle. It's a neat channel, and I generally really like it. But the video I want to talk about is one I watched recently called Can You Solve the Frog Riddle? by Derek Abbott. And if you haven't seen it, I'd advise you pause this video here and go watch it. It's only four minutes long, so off you go. I'll see you in four minutes. Can You Solve the Frog Riddle? by Derek Abbott plays in the background. Back. Now, before I get started here, I just want to clarify that I am completely mathematically inept. I have no clue what I'm talking about generally when it comes to maths. I can't even remember the order of operations. And I understand the person who wrote the frog riddle is a university professor with a whole alphabet's worth of letters before his name, so if you re betting on this, I'd honestly go with me being wrong here. And a little disclaimer before we get started. When I got the sense this riddle was wrong, I googled, Is Tid Ed's frog riddle wrong? and found pages and pages of discussion, all of which look like this and none of which I understood. But I did find a video by the channel Mind Your Decisions, which again, it does look like this. But I think I understood enough of it to maybe get a mathematical understanding of why the riddle's wrong. So, full props to the Mind Your Decisions channel for doing what I'm going to assume and hope is the correct mathematical legwork. Um, although I am... All the understand it somewhat contentious. Now, all I can do with me video is tree to translate this into something understandable by me and the rest of the mathematically inept people out there. So let's look at the riddle. You need to find a female frog or you will d. And you re aware of a unique croak that only males of the species do. Otherwise, the males and females are indistinguishable. Now, if you see one frog alone on a stump and you don't hear it croak, that's a 50 minus 50 chance of it being male or female. I am with the riddle's reasoning so far. Then you hear a croak behind you. You turn around and you see two frogs. So you know that at least one frog of the pair is male, but you don't know which one. What's the chance that the pair contains a female? So the gut feeling on this is obviously, well, 50. It doesn't matter which frog croaked, because the other one has a 50 minus 50 chance of being male or female regardless. This is what the Ted Ed video calls wrong answer number one, and I actually accept their reasoning as to why it's wrong. You see, they write out the sample space of possible combinations. And they say hearing a croak eliminates the possibility of two females, so they end up with this. Now, I don't know why the male and female combination is counted twice here, but whatever. Enough people seem to accept that those are different possibilities, that I'm just gonna concede to that point. I'm ignorant and I don't get why they read different, but okay, they read different. They of it. Why they of it?
Now, my problem with the riddle is how we find out the additional information. The croaking. You see, I'd be willing to accept the riddle's logic if there was no croaking, but maybe like a sign near the frogs that said, at least one of these two frogs is male. You know, if we could trust a random sign in the jungle. But the croaking changes things. And here's my problem with it. We re not told why the frogs croak or how often. So we'll just assume that all male frogs croak on average at a similar rate. Now, logically, two male frogs will croak around twice as much over a given time period as one male frog. Which means if hearing a croak over a short time period is your only way of identifying a male, the middle possibility here becomes twice as likely because either frog could have croaked. These are the only three possibilities. But because of how we find out the information, you know a behavior which would occur twice as much with two males, they re not all equally likely possibilities. And if we account for the increased likelihood of the middle possibility occurring, I'd put the odds of surviving back down at around 50. And why only around and not exactly? Again, this is our gut feeling here, but a you as you need to account for the odds of hearing one male croak and not hearing the other male croak. But I am rapidly getting out of my depth here and sort of wandering back into this territory, so I am just gonna leave that alone. So there we go. That's me take on the frog riddle. Do you agree? Am I wrong? If you think I am wrong, Please leave a comment explaining why I'm wrong so I can hopefully agree with you and then stop thinking about this entirely because I've got things to do.